Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Bear Chats. My name is Scott Cordishi, social media specialist here at Brown University, and this week it gives me great pleasure to welcome Bear, Bear Chats, former Brown University defensive end from the class of 2010 and three-time Super Bowl champion for the New England Patriots, James Devlin. James, how are you? I'm doing well, Scott. How are you doing? I'm doing great, James. Well, thank you for joining us, and I guess I should say congratulations on retirement. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's it's a it's a weird time a weird time in life right now um but yeah the uh the retirement you know it it was it was what was necessary for for me and my family so uh you know it just had to be done you know uh i want to talk about your great pro career but before we do that uh what went into your decision making behind retiring at this point in time we know you missed last season or the majority of it due to injury was it really the injury that forced your hand or was it just this was the right time for me and my family i was it was really kind of the injury um <clears throat> you know once i didn't expect the injury to be as, as complicated as it really kind of um, made itself out, out to be um so when i was first injured i thought you know i'll, I'll just rehab this i'll get back maybe later in the year but then things kind of started to unpeel and, and I, you know, it, it led to, uh, you know, a potentially more serious risk to, uh, to play the game of football again. So, you know, just had to kind of weigh my options with my family in mind. And, um, you know, it was, it was in my family's best interest for me to stop playing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm proud that, that, uh, you know, was able to make the decision and, and put my family first because that's that's where my priority will always lie. Absolutely, as well it should. James, could you have ever imagined having the professional career that you did? I mean, I look back and three Super Bowl titles as a member of the New England Patriots and such a key member at that. You know, I remember back to your days at Brown when you were a defensive end and uh, you carved out quite a career for yourself as a fullback in the NFL. But could you ever have imagined having the type of success, team success, and individual for that matter, that you had? Absolutely not. You know, I say it a lot. If someone had told me 10 years when I was just, you know, out working out on, on the fields back behind the OMAC that I would have, you know, 10 years of the career I had, you know, with three Super Bowls, I would have told them they were crazy. You know, so, uh, you know, it really was, uh, it was, it was just a blessing, man. It was a, it was an absolute privilege to, to go to work every single day. And, um, you know, it was a, it was a really cool thing to be able to live out a dream. Born and raised just outside of the city of Philadelphia. And James, I know you've talked about this. You had aspirations of playing, quote unquote, big time college football, right? Uh, mm -hmm. High, you know, FBS level programs. How did you wind up here at Brown? I know Frank Sheehan, the former offensive line coach, recruited you. But take us through the whole process about, you know, how you wound up at Brown. Yeah, so I, uh, I played at a relatively small uh, public school outside of Philly. And, um, and... So start, starting off, I was a, always a pretty big kid, you know, in, in like freshman and sophomore year, I was like 230, 240. Um, so I was starting to get some some traction with uh, with colleges. And, you know, my first couple letters were from, you know, Michigan and, and Duke, UConn, uh, Virginia Tech, UVA, um, you know, a couple really good uh, school, you know, academic schools, but also um, – you know, really good football schools as well. And I started taking some, you know, unofficial visits and doing all that stuff. But as my, my, uh, my years in high school kind of went on, um, you know, there's, there's opportunities from those big time schools kind of started to fall by the wayside. And really then I shifted my focus on the Ivy league. And uh, at that time it was really between Brown and Princeton. They showed the most interest in me. I had the most interest in them. And I took official visits to both Brown and Princeton. And I just felt like I was a better fit at Brown with the coaches and the players that were there. And, um, you know, I'm really glad that I made that decision because those were 40 best years of my life. And you are a mechanical engineering major at yeah. Brown. But I understand that your interest in mechanical engineering took root while you were in high school. Explain. Yeah, so I, uh, I took a... Took a lot of like, you know, CAD courses, a lot of shop courses and, and um, high school, I guess there are classes, not courses back then. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just fell in love with, uh, you know, really like math and science, but also like the 
application process of that. Um, so I really, I went, to, I went to Brown wanting to be an architect, but they don't have like the actual architecture, um, you know, they don't have that as a concentration. Yeah. So um, you can make it, but then I would have had to take classes at RISD and go across, across town a little bit. So I didn't really feel comfortable with that. So I, you know, fell right into a mechanical engineer. I thought it was a, the closest, um, you know, wavelength that, with the architecture stuff that I was really, really uh, interested in. And, and it worked out. On the field, you were just a terrific defensive end for the program in your four years at Brown. And in 2008, you won an Ivy League championship. What do you remember most about that season? Oh, that season was awesome. Um, you know, we just had a really good nucleus of, of players. Um, you know, the class ahead of me, it was really, really strong class. And then um, they had won a the year I was being recruited. So I graduated in 2000, graduated high school in 2006. That, that recruiting class was, they were coming off of an Ivy League championship at Brown. So we had a pretty good class um, coming in. And I always thought that my class was a really, really strong class. I mean, we had some really uh, the all-time greats at, at Brown playing with me. And, um, you know, it was a really good, it was just a really good time. We had a really strong coaching staff and a really strong group of guys out on the field. And, um, you know, one of my favorite memories from that year was when we won the, uh, the Ivy League championship against Columbia there at home. And uh, Neil McGrath was my D-line coach at the time. And he was, he was an awesome guy. Um, we, I mean, he had the moniker Bloodbath McGrath. <laughs> but he was just a, he was an awesome guy. And, um, you know, he always said, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to drink Sam Adams and, and smoke Stogies in the 50-yard line if we win the Ivy League championship. And we did exactly that. That was, that was a really good, uh, really good memory. James, uh, you took the unconventional path to the National Football League, uh, the road less traveled, let's call it. Take us through your journey. I mean, at first it was, you know, the Arena Football League in Oklahoma City, and then it was the UFL with Florida. And I guess before all of that, you had to make the decision to become a fullback or try out as a fullback to make it to the pros. Take us through that whole journey. Yeah, so that was that is a complicated journey a little bit, you know, so. Coming right out of school, um, after the draft, I, I didn't receive any offers to come to any teams as an undrafted free agent. I actually got a tryout with the Cleveland Browns as a 3-4 outside linebacker in, in uh, Rob Ryan's defense. So I obviously went out to Cleveland, didn't even make it to the third day of rookie minicamp. They sent me home. Um, I was a fish out of water. And um, so then I started just, you know, kind of lining up interviews and stuff to pursue my engineering degree. And, um, and then just randomly a Facebook message uh, came across my desk and it was to come down and try out for an arena football team, the Oklahoma City Yard Dogs. And I took them up on it, flew down there on my own dime, showed up at, a, uh, at an indoor um, practice facility and, and uh, tried out and made it. I uh, spent five weeks there, went back home again, just kind of like waiting for my next opportunity. And, um, you know, at that at that moment, I was, was kind of going through stuff with my agent and we were talking, uh, should I try to be a tight end? Should I try to be a defensive end, a linebacker, a long snapper, whatever. And then um, the idea of a fullback kind of came about and we're like, you know what, that might fit. Um, it was it kind of... It, it fit me well with my strengths in the game of football. I always loved contact. And, um, you know, so I got the opportunity to go down to a try for a UFL team down in uh, Orlando, Florida, the Florida Tuskers, and took them up on it, went down there, tried out as a fullback, uh, made a team, spent that whole year there. And then finally, um, after that season, I went to the Cincinnati Bengals, spent you know, about two years on their practice squad, went up to New England in 2012. I was practice squad for one year, and then the rest is history. And what a history it turned out to be for you, Jimmy. Um, yeah. Talk a little bit about uh, Bill Belichick. You know, he's a guy that, as you know, does not throw around compliments, uh, you know, 
very easily, yet the praise that he had for you when you announced your retirement a few weeks ago was amazing. That had to make you, make you feel pretty good. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I hold Coach Belichick uh, to the highest level of respect. I mean, um, what he's done in the game of football is truly remarkable. It's unprecedented, really. And, um, you know, he, he to, to it's been such an honor and a privilege to to work for him um, in the, the last eight seasons, uh, you know, and so to hear those words and to, to see that was just an absolute like honor. And, um, you know, I owe, I owe, you know, much of my, my career to him. I mean, he was the one who really gave me my shot. And um, so it was, it was an absolute, I mean, I couldn't even believe it, you know. It was still to this day, like, unbelievable that he said that about me. But it, it's – all that respect is is mutual. I, I love that guy. I think you epitomize and you embody what Bill Belichick is looking for, just that selfless, hardworking individual that will do whatever it takes to try to win – football games. And, and I think that's why Bill Belichick, I think, was really so fond of you. And speaking of that, James, you got to play for arguably the greatest coach of all time. You got to play with arguably the greatest quarterback of all time. What makes those two as great as they are? I think it's just their their willingness um, to do whatever it takes to win, to win football games. You know, they understand that, that the, the, the betterment of the team is more important than themselves. They know that whatever it takes, whatever, whatever day it may be, whatever the, whatever's going on outside in their personal lives, it really all boils down to they have a job to do and that's to make the team better and go out there and try to win football games and, and you know, no matter what the cost. And so they're, uh, I mean, they're ultimate, they're the ultimate competitors. Um, you know, you've heard the stories of Tom, but, you know, put Bill right along with him. I mean, they, they just love to win, and they will do whatever it takes. James, uh, one of my favorite moments from your pro career was your first career touchdown in Houston against the yeah. Texans. And I'll always remember, remember Greg Gumbel's call because he, like everybody else watching, was just amazed at the effort you put in on that play. What do you remember about that particular play? Uh, you know, that was my, you know, one of my first times touching the ball that year in 2013. And um, I knew, you know, I had about a year, a yard to get into the goal line. And um, so it was, there was nothing that was going to stop me because I knew if I didn't get in then, I would never see that opportunity again. Um, but that was one of the longest plays of my entire career. I mean, just like looking down the line, am I in yet? Am I in yet? Just bouncing off of people and like doing all kinds of stuff. Um, I just, the two things that were going through my head was just keep my legs churning and hold on to the football because I did not want to, did not want to fumble at that moment. Um, but it all worked out, you know, it was, uh, it's really cool to look back and kind of like, you know, a lot of people say like, oh, that was kind of a, uh, like a, a good symbol of your, your path into the NFL. Um, you know, kind of like get ejected and no, 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 no. And finally get my chance. And. Um, that is a pretty cool moment in my career. You were always known for your work ethic in the weight room, both at Brown and with the Patriots. In fact, I think you were the strongest player on your team here at Brown and the strongest player on your team in New England. Am I correct in saying that you might parlay your love for the weight room into a future career? I, yeah, I think so. I think uh, it's, it's a natural passion of mine that I've always really loved. And so I think it would be a good way for me to stay close to the game of football. You know, I, just, I played, played the game for 25 years, and I think it would be crazy to think that I'm just going to walk away and never, uh, and never, you know, do anything with the game again. And I think it, this would be a good avenue to pursue, um, you know, staying close to the game, but also, you know, following a passion that I've had for a long time. I understand you also had a new personal best uh, in the squat. Do you care to share that with us? Yeah, so I uh, started safety bar squatting. So I know people, uh, if it's not a straight bar or whatever, uh, but I had 700 pounds on the box for the first time for a squat. Um, so still trying to trying to up those numbers and, and get as strong as I can. I mean, you know, I'm not competing anymore really, but um, who knows, maybe, maybe I'll find a, a way to, compete in some other aspect in in the sport of lifting who knows 
Well, an Ivy League championship as a member of the Brown Bears, three Super Bowl championships as a member of the Patriots. James, you've made a lot of people in this area proud, not just Patriot fans, but Brown fans as well. Congratulations on a great career, and, and thank you for joining us. Oh, well, thanks, Scott, and I appreciate all the support from the whole New England area, really. That's James Devlin. Former Patriots fullback and former Brown Bears defensive end, Brown class of 2010, our guest on this week's edition of Bear Chats.